Hello readers and happy autumn, which means a lot of time to be spent under our blankets, a cup of tea in our hand and lots of books on our side. Today I wanted to chat about some uh, Japanese literature books that I've recently read and enjoyed quite a lot. And before I start, just wanted to uh, put out a little disclaimer here, because I'm no expert in Japanese literature at all. So uh, it just happened that recently I enjoyed and read this uh, books by Japanese writers and I just thought that I could share them with you because I really like them. Speaking of tea, um, which is by the way my favorite beverage even though I'm Italian and I should enjoy coffee more than tea but anyway. So this is the first book I wanted to talk about. It's The Book of Tea by Kakuzo Okakura and this book was written originally in English which I found it quite interesting uh, and it was written at the beginning of the 20th century and it was written in English because mostly this was like a critique of the conception and stereotypical representation that the West had of the East. It's actually a celebration of the culture of tea and this philosophy called teaism which is actually described in the first page as a cult founded on the adoration of the beautiful among the sordid facts of everyday existence. It may sound a little bit snobbish and elitist from some perspectives, but uh, I found it quite an interesting and inspiring view on life. And the way that this writer talks about their appreciation of tea as a key element in their culture, in the Japanese culture, and it puts this in conversation with philosophies like um, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, Zenism, all the isms really. And with all the concept of uh, art, aestheticism and art appreciation um, in the simplicity of the even the most mundane events. If you're a nerd like me, you're gonna love when it describes the different schools of teas and how it evolved and developed and it came to be the beverage that we enjoy today. So if you're a tea lover, I really recommend this one. Now, moving on to another beverage, really. This is quite a recent book that has been published in, in the UK in 2019 by Picador. This is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. It's actually a short read, but it really makes you reflect on things. And the premise of the book is that time traveling is actually possible, um, but it's possible under certain conditions and within specific limitations. What I liked about this book is that it doesn't treat time traveling as a like fantasy, sci-fi uh, element to the story. I like that they talk about this, the time traveling as is actually a matter of fact among the other facts of life. It's set at this cafe and if you sit at a specific table, you are able to travel back in time only for a short period of time, which is the time that it takes for your beverage to get cold, which is actually what is happening to mine. There are four chapters in this book and in each of this there is a, a protagonist one who wants to travel back in time and the story intertwines between one another. So it almost felt like um, reading some short stories but they all had this connection between the backdrop and the core characters. I really enjoyed this, how the structure of this book was put together. It actually deals with the universal themes and universal human emotions like love, um, illness, death, family and regret. There, there's a lot of references to regret and it's actually at the basis of the motivations of the characters to, to go back in time. It's actually written in a quite plain language and it's really easy to read, sometimes even too plain and nothing uh, much happens in the story and sometimes it feels like the pace is too slow. But uh, I didn't mention that this story has been originally written as a play, so it makes sense for its style to be in this way. It'd be really great actually to, to see the play live, but I guess that for now I'm going to be content with reading the sequel that has actually just been published in, I think it was September 2020, always by Picador. And it's called Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. So I'm really excited to get my hands on the sequel. If you've read that, please let me know what you think about this and in the comments below. 
before the coffee gets cold. Lastly, I've seen this book all over Instagram and really everywhere lately. I've been hearing a lot about this writer Hiromi Kawakami. Apologies for my pronunciation. I'm trying to learn Japanese, I swear, but still not there. So this is Strange Weather in Tokyo. This one has been published by Granta Books and this is the 2020 editions which includes both the main novel as well as a short story called Parade. It's quite a short novel and it reads really really well, really easily. This story follows the life of Tsukiko and her ex-school teacher, Sensei. They meet several years later at a bar when they're much older. She's in her mid-30s and he's in his mid-60s, so there's quite a gap between them. So as they keep meeting up frequently uh, at the bar and at Sensei's home, something really starts growing between them in such a quiet and intimate and delicate way. So it's this love story, unexpected love story, that is born out of random conversation late at night after lots of bottles of sake. Between the, the funny and sad and bittersweet and reflective conversation, there are a lot of descriptions of the food that they share, lots of Japanese typical dishes and they are described with very vivid and colourful words and I really love the descriptions of the food as well as the descriptions of the weather and the environment uh, for example when they go mushroom hunting in the woods and for example when they go to the much anticipated cherry blossom event as I was saying this edition contains the parade short story I have really enjoyed this short story so if you have a chance uh, and if you've read the, the main story, I recommend to go and read the short story Parade. I actually read sort of like a fairy tale because it's infused with Japanese folklore and magic realism. Also another thing that I found really, really interesting is the way the layout of the short story uh, is put together. Because for example, there are certain pages where paragraphs are scattered and there are just a few sentences some longer, some shorter, and it actually felt like witnessing the conversation as it was unfolding before your eyes or a memory that it was like being revisited in front of you. And lastly, one, one little thing I wanted to mention about this book is what the author says in the, at the end of the book in the afterword, and she's talking and she's reflecting about the story, about the characters, and about the end of the story. And so she writes this, The world that exists behind the story is never fully known, not even to the author. That is what I had in mind as I created this. And I find it quite fascinating for the author to think about her story in this way. And I'm going to leave you with this insightful, hopefully, thoughts for me. And I really hope you enjoyed my rambling on Japanese literature and I really look forward to reading your comments so please, if you know some other cool books from Japanese writers, please write them and recommend them in the comments down below. So I guess until then, happy reading and enjoy the autumn season.